Thing by Joule Thomson effect. So when a compressed air that is real gas is allowed to expand into a region of low pressure or vacuum under adiabatic conditions, a lowering of temperature is observed. So when a gas is passed from a uh, compressed gas is passed from the uh, higher pressure to low pressure or vacuum, the condition should be adiabatic. It means internal energy uh, there will be no addition of heat into that system. So what happens? The temperature becomes lower down, and this is called as the Joule Thomson effect. So what are the salient features of the Joule Thomson effect? So in the expansion, when gas is expanding, the molecules of the gas move far from far apart from one another so this gas move far apart from each other and then what happens then work is done by this gas molecules in expanding in overcoming the intermolecular forces and as the system is thermally insulated we are not adding any heat inside this system so work is done at the cost of kinetic energy of the gas molecules and consequently a cooling effect is observed so let's take T1 and T2, these are the temperature of the gas before and after expansion of the gas through a small jet under adiabatic conditions. If T1 is greater than T2, then cooling effect is positive. This means uh, T1 greater than T2 means pressure of that before expansion is P1 and pressure after expansion is P2. Similarly, volume will be uh, before expansion V1 and after expansion V2. So, or you can see that after expansion, uh, the second volume will be zero. So, condition for cooling effect is these two conditions are important. In second condition, if T1 is lesser than T2, then heating effect is observed, and this is called as negative Joule Thomson effect. Or here, delta H is zero because there is no addition of heat take place during Joule, Joule Thomson effect. greater is the difference in pressure inside and outside the jet greater is the change in temperature so if the pressure inside and outside is uh, difference is greater then change in temperature will be much more greater so there is a difference of pressure third condition pressure dependence on the temperature during expansion is given by joule thomson effect so mu is the symbol for joule thomson so this is the mathematically we are writing uh, delta t upon delta p at constant heat this is the constant heat. So if Joule Thomson effect is positive, this means this is your cooling effect. That is T2 minus T1. That this is the difference temperature and P2 minus P1. This both should be negative. So this is the value. If the Joule Thomson is negative, this means it is a heating effect. Means the first is positive, second is negative. So this is a negative. Or you can write reverse also. If Joule Thomson effect is zero, this means neither heating nor cooling. This means the gas is ideal in nature. So this is the system you can see this gas is at higher pressure and say higher temperature T1. T1 is greater than the T2. And second is your P2. So P2 is lesser than the P2 and T2 is lesser than the T2. Uh, this is your throttle. Throttle means a jet where the gas is passing from the higher pressure to lower pressure. So on passing no heat is transferred to the system. So for, uh, for throttling process what happens when the gas is passing through a small jet. See so small jet is passing. So here no heat is added, P2 is again lesser than P1, this P2 is lesser, pressure is less and the pressure is more. So here we can observe three type of phenomena or three type of condition. If T1 is greater than T2, if temperature of this system is greater than the T2 and cooling is observed, this is the experimental phenomena. If T1 is equal to T2, then no heating or not, uh, nor cooling. If T1 is lesser than T2, then heating is Absorb. So these are the three cases in which we can study Joule Thomson effect. Now next is inversion temperature. So what is this one? So for each gas, there is a characteristic temperature above which a gas on expansion, or above which a gas on expansion, it will show the heating effect. While below it is shows the cools, the gas cools on expansion. So this temperature is called as inversion temperature of the gas. And mathematically we can write inversion temperature is equal to 2a by rb what is a and b a and b are the wonderful gas constant so let us take one example to understand this inversion temperature so gases which show a cooling effect under ordinary temperature have 
fairly high inversion temperature so hydrogen and helium have a very low inversion temperature so inversion temperature of hydrogen is minus 80 degree centigrade if the temperature is below minus 80 degree centigrade then uh, expansion of gas below this temperature will be the cooling effect and expansion of gas above this temperature will be the heating effect similarly for helium uh, if the expansion of gas take place before this temperature means minus 241 or minus 242 then cooling effect if it take above this temperature then it will be heat effect that's why hydrogen and helium they shows heating effect at room temperature because they have very low value in inversion temperature so these values are very very low so we cannot say we cannot observe the cooling effect by the hydrogen and helium now uh, so this process is used for liquefaction of the gases so by using this inversion uh, temperature we can liquefy gases now next is your uh, liquefy uh, to make the li liquef uh, liquefaction of the gases uh, one more process called as adiabatic demagnetization so in this what happens actually this is found by giac and devy so what is the principle behind this uh, adiabatic demagnetization if a paramagnetic substance like uh, cerium fluoride and gadolinium sulfate and other rare earth as salts is magnetized and then demagnetized adiabatically so first they are magnetized and then followed by their demagnetized and it's, it should be done in adiabatic condition that is isolated from surrounding then salt undergoes a reversible adiabatic transformations in which the atomic spins becomes disordered that is the entropy of the salt increases the energy for this transmission uh, transformation come from the crystal lattice so this energy is coming from the crystal lattice and uh, the temperature fall or it is lowered so by using this technique mr uh, giac he obtained the lower temperature of the gases by applying magnetic thermal effects or on gas samples so he used this principle to uh, cool the gases so mathematically uh, inversion temperature is equal to 2a by rb or we can write 2 into boyle's temperature so boyle's temperature is a by rb and uh, boyle's temperature by critical temperature is equal to 2 by 3 so we can say critical temperature is equal to 3 by 2 into b so if you compare between three temperature, inversion temperature is greater than the critical temperature and this is greater than the Boyle's temperature. So for example, helium has a inversion temperature is 193 Kelvin while the critical temperature is 5.3 Kelvin and Boyle's temperature 3.5 Kelvin. So this is the order of the uh, temperature of one gases.